Well, hey guys, it's Darwin, and after three years and well over 4,000 miles of through hikes, bikepacking trips, and various backpacking trips, I'm finally ready to do a long term review of what I once called my perfect tent, the Z Pax Ultiplex. So, if you remember back in 2019, I was on the search for the perfect tent. I was trying a bunch of tents throughout 2019, from the Z-Pax Pleximid to the Tarp Tent Aeon Li, and I even tried out the MLD Solomid XL. Basically, what I was looking for in a perfect tent was something that was made out of DCF, used one trekking pole, and was long enough at the head end and the foot end for me because I am 6'1". Now, I put out a couple of videos back in 2020 talking about the Ultiplex, how it came to be, uh, talking about the specs, and I even did a short-term review after using it for about 50 nights. But in that first video, I did declare, so I'll definitely end up doing a full review later in the year of the Ultiplex after I put a bunch of miles on it on the AT, in Peru, on the Colorado Trail, and the Great Divide Trail, so keep an eye out for that. Then the world basically shut down. I wasn't able to do most of the hikes and trips that I had planned that year, so I didn't really get this out as much as I wanted to throughout 2020. And when I got around to doing a review that year, I still really only had 50 nights on this tent. But hell, back when I reviewed my z Pax Duplex, I had 3,000 plus miles on the tent. So now, after three years and using this thing all around the world from domestic and international bike packing trips to a through hike of the Continental Divide Trail and a ton of various backpacking trips that I've been on over the past three years, I think I'm finally ready to give my final thoughts and long-term review on how this tent has treated me. Do I still consider it my perfect tent? Would I buy it again in 2024? So, like usual, z -Pax did not sponsor this video. They don't sponsor me, and I bought this tent at full price back in 2020. All right, so for some of you that didn't see those other videos, let's go over some of the specs. The Ultiplex is a one-person, single trekking pole tension tent that is made out of Dyneema composite or DCF fabric. All the seams are taped, making it highly water resistant. It's fully enclosed with a no seam bug net, has one big rainbow zipper door, a single vestibule with double storm doors, and an eight inch bathtub floor. The weight on the production model is 15.4 ounces, and at the time of this video, the retail price of the Ultiplex is $669. So, like I said, in the past, I have put out two videos in 2020, diving more into the specs, so if I missed anything in this video, go check those out. I'll leave them in the description box below. But what are my, I guess, final thoughts or my long-term thoughts after using this tent all around the world for over 4,000 miles and three years? Uh, first, let's talk about some of the pros that I have with the tent. Like I said, the Ultiplex is made of DCF or Dyneema composite fabric. Honestly, after putting DCF tents through the ringer for the past, I don't know, six years, I don't think that I would ever buy another tent that wasn't made of DCF. I've tried some Sil Poly tents here and there, and honestly, some of the cons with Sil Poly just don't make it worth it for me. DCF's really great because it's an excellent, excellent fabric for shedding water, keeping water out of the tent. Uh, it doesn't stretch out. So when you're dealing with something like a tension tent, like the Ultiplex, and you're getting it taut with tension, it doesn't sag in the middle of the night. It performs phenomenal in the rain. It dries quickly when it is wet. And I've never had this tent leak on me in three years of extensive use. Another pro that I've mentioned in the past is it's super simple to set up and pitch. When you first get a tent like the Ultiplex, there's a little bit of a learning curve and it takes a minute to kind of figure out how to get that perfect pitch. But once you figured it out, 
it becomes muscle memory and I can throw this tent up every single time super fast and honestly faster than any other tent I've ever owned. And aside from it being simple to set up, it itself is simple. It's a very minimal tent and it's all one piece. And what I mean by that, a lot of tents have a separate inner and a separate fly. So when you go to set it up, first you're setting up your inner with your poles, then you're putting your fly over it, then you're staking it out, then you're pulling your guidelines out. The Altiplex is a very, very simplistic one piece tent. So if I'm doing something like a through hike or a bike packing trip and I'm in the elements, say I get to camp and it starts raining, I can grab this out of my pack, I can throw it on the ground, slap some stakes in it, put my pole in it, and it's ready to get in. I can get out of the elements. I'm not messing with multiple pieces of kit to put my tin up. That also, you know, lessens the, I guess, chance of something tearing or breaking down or an extra part. For me, when it comes to gear, especially on something like a through hike or a bike packing trip or something where I'm wanting to keep my setup very minimal, it's really important for me that my gear doesn't have a bunch of stuff that I can lose. It doesn't have a bunch of stuff that I can break or tear uh, or have gear failures with. So I really love that this is all one piece and it just fits in this one bag. And last but not least, the thing that drew me to the Altiplex is the length. Again, I'm 6'1", I'm a pretty long person, I guess, and other tents that I've tried in the past, especially single wall tents that have a kind of slanted wall, I always find that my head end and my foot box, my quilt, will touch the sides. Now, if I'm in a dry environment, that's not that big of a deal, and typically I'm fine, but if I'm in a very, very humid environment where a lot of condensation is gonna happen on the inside of my tent, well, a lot of times I will wake up with a wet foot box on my quilt, or I'll wake up with water dripping on my damn head. So what I love about the Altiplex is because they gave it an extra long peak, um, it allows the angles to kind of cheat with the tent. So instead of the tent being like this, as the peak goes up, it extends those walls and takes them off of the foot end and off of the head end. Now, if I was something like 6'3 or 6'4, I would probably still rub the walls on this tent for everyone that has been wondering. But if you're like me and you're 6'1, this is almost a perfect tent as far as length goes. Honestly, I could probably use a little bit more length just because I move around a lot when I'm sleeping. But at 6'1, I have plenty of room and I make sure that my foot box stays dry and I don't have water dripping on my head, creating like some sort of water torture. <laughs> All right, so next up are the cons or dislikes that I have with the Altiplex. To be 100% honest, after three years of using this in tons of different types of environments, in multiple countries, states, on bikepacking trips, through hikes, I don't really have much to complain about when it comes to the Altiplex. It's treated me pretty damn well, and honestly, I've probably slept in this thing more nights than my own damn bed over three years. Uh, I do see a lot of people complain about certain things with the tent, like uh, the rainbow zipper door. I see people say, I hate the rainbow zipper door, give me an L door. Um, that's never really bothered me. It's been in this tent, I had it in my duplex. People complain that it falls into the dirt, I just, fold mine and let it fall on the inside of the tent. I'm not sure why you would allow your tent door to fall in the dirt. Uh, so that's not something that has ever been a con for me. I see people complain that, um, you know, it gets holes in the bathtub floor easily. Again, after 4,000 miles and three years of using this in so many different types of environments, super rocky mountain environments, dirt, sand, bikepacking trips, through hikes, backpacking trips, I do not have a single hole in the bathtub of this tent. And no, I have never used a ground sheet. I just simply make sure that when I set my tent up, I'm not setting it on objects that are gonna pierce the floor. I don't set it on pine cones, a ton of sharp pine needles, sticks, and rocks. I just make sure that where I'm setting my tent down is a good spot and it's not gonna damage 
the inside of my tent. And I guess I could complain about the price being $669, but again, that all comes to use case. For me, over the past three years, I have used this at least four to six months, if not more, a year. So $669 for four to six months a year really isn't that bad for the amount of miles that I've put in this. Now, if you're somebody that is maybe gonna go out and backpack once a month, yeah, I can see where $669 is pretty pricey for shelter. But the thing to keep in mind with shelters like this are, I know z -Packs makes all of their tents here in the US, so obviously labor is gonna cost more. Plus, DCF is quite an expensive fabric, and for me, it's worth the price. Um, and that's really it. Oh, wait, I know a con. The production model actually comes with a thicker guy line cord. The thicker, I think they used to call it Z line. I'm not sure if they still call it Z line. I personally like the thinner stuff. Uh, when I had my Z packs hexamid tarp with doors, it had the thinner cord on it and I got spoiled and I got used to it. So when I bought this and my Ultiplex tarp, I actually had to switch it out for the thinner cord. So I guess that's a complaint. I wish z -Packs would put the thinner stuff on it. I like this stuff and I put a lot of miles on it. Oh, and then there's that. z -Packs discontinued the Ultiplex tarp, which is the other version of this tent that I do have. It's basically the exact same thing, except for it does not have the netting in it. So it has a detachable bathtub and a tarp and it's perfect if I'm gonna go out for a more minimal setup, if I'm hiking and camping in the desert, in a super dry environment, or a place where I know there's not gonna be a lot of bugs, or for bike packing trips, because it breaks down and packs down really, really small. So I guess that's a con. I'm pretty upset that ZPAX discontinued the tarp. ZPAX, do the right thing. Bring the Altiplex tarp back. All right, guys, there you go. Uh, my final thoughts after these three years of using this thing for, again, about 90% of all the trips that I've done. So do I still think the Altiplex is my perfect tent? No. Like I said years ago, I don't believe there's any such thing as a perfect tent. Um, and I'm always down for trying and testing new things to see if there's something better for my use case. That being said, this gets pretty damn close to perfect for me. If I was gonna go out and read through hike the Continental Divide Trail, or I was gonna go on a long distance bike packing trip in another country, this is still the shelter that I would grab every single time. Again, because for me, I'm looking for something that packs down small, uses a single trekking pole, or a standalone pole if I'm doing a bike packing trip. It's a small package, it's simple to set up, and I know that it's gonna perform well in the environments. Uh, I'm actually currently testing another brand new tent, but that tent is for some very specific types of trips. I'll fill you guys in on that later. Um, but for everything else, this is still the tent that I'm gonna grab every single time. And is it worth buying? Is it still worth buying in 2024? Is it worth the price for me? Yeah. Actually, I'm about to buy another Altiplex to replace this with, because the truth is, DCF does have a lifespan just like all materials. And even though I don't have any holes in the bathtub, I have one hole in the sidewall where I accidentally zipped it up in the door when I was packing it up like an idiot and had to patch it up. Um, this fabric does start to break down over time and after 4,000 miles of having it in different environments, in different weather, um, it's probably time to replace it so I can make sure that I get another three years and 4,000 miles out of an Altiplex. There you guys go. Hopefully, if you've been looking at the Altiplex, this video will help give you a little bit of insight and a little bit of my use case over the past three years and help you make a decision if it's the right shelter for you. Speaking of that, what is the right shelter for you? Uh, what have you been using? What have you put a ton of miles on beat the crap out of, and it's something that you reach for every single time, no matter what trip that you're doing, leave it down below and let me know your thoughts. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're taking care of yourself 
You're taking care of each other. I love you guys. And as always, thanks for watching.